If you've ever tried making a map in R, you might be overwhelmed by the sheer number of packages that exist. These packages may look completely different and take in differently shaped data, so it can be pretty confusing to figure out which one to use. Today I want to show you how to quickly and reliably make beautiful maps in R just like these with the Plotly package. If you see my other videos, you might remember I created one on interactive graphs with Plotly. It's a fantastic package that's well maintained and can produce impressive visualizations just out of the box. So let's get started. The first map we're going to be making is this interactive choropleth map of the US. We've got different US states colored by different minimum wages, and we have this slider at the bottom that allows us to change the year. Our first step is going to be loading in our packages. Plotly, of course, is going to help us build out these interactive maps. Dplyr is going to help us with some data cleaning and data wrangling, and the reader library for reading in our CSV files. Now let's load in our data. I'm using this data set I found online of minimum wages by states by year, but we're only going to be looking at a few of these columns. So here I'm reading in my data set, and I'll go ahead and run this just so we can take a look. We've got year, state, and wage, but we actually need to do one more thing to this data frame. The way the choropleth maps and Plotly work for US states, when you're telling Plotly that you want to color a certain state like Alabama, you actually need to use the state abbreviation, the two-letter abbreviation. So I actually had to go and find a different data set online with just states and their abbreviations just so I could join the two tables together. So let me do that really quick. We'll read in our CSV file called states and we'll include an inner join with our minimum wage data frame and states. And instead of selecting the state name, we're actually just gonna select the state code and we can run all of this. So now we've got our year, our state code and our wage. So let's move on to step two, which is actually making our graph. We're first going to start by creating a new variable called minWageGraph, and we're going to call the plot geo function. This is part of the Plotly library. We need to specify our data, so that's going to be minWageDF. We also need to specify a location mode. In this case, we're looking at US states, so we'll put in USA states. And essentially by doing this, that'll tell Plotly that our geographic data is going to be using those state codes. And in order to get that slider at the bottom with all the different years, we need to specify the frame by the year column. And just note that anytime you're calling one of these columns in the Plotly functions, you have to put in the tilde before it. So we're done with the plot geo function. We're gonna pipe this into add trace, which is just adding this trace layer onto our graph. We're gonna specify the actual states. So the variable is locations and the column name is code, which again has our two letter state codes. We also need to specify a Z and a color. And in this case, it's going to be our wage because that's how we want the states to be colored by the different wages. And once we've done that, we can go ahead and run this and now output our min wage graph. And you see, we get this map of the world. We've got our slider on the bottom. And because it's plotly, we can zoom in and of course, hover over our data points to see more granular data. But this graph is far from complete. So let's make a few changes. We first want to make sure that we're showing just the US and not the whole world. So this is pretty easy. We just need to add another layer onto our plotly map. This one is going to be called layout and we're going to set the geo variable to a list and the list is going to have a variable called scope, which is set to USA. And I know this is a little confusing, but bear with me. We can run all of that again. And now we just have the US. There are actually different types of scopes and different projections that I'd recommend you look at in the documentation, but you can get some really cool looking graphs in Plotly. The next thing we want to do is mess with the actual colors that our map is. You'll notice that if we change the frame, the scale of the wages actually changes too. So it starts with the max at two and by 2017, we're at about 11. In order to fix that, we just need to set a min and max value for our wage. That'll be reflected in this legend over here. So in our add trace, we can set a Z min a zero and a Z max. Instead of manually specifying it, I'm going to call the max function and we want the highest value in this wage column. So that'll just be min wage DF wage. I also want to get away from the default color palette. So I'm going to set our color scale down here to the electric color palette. We'll run all of this again. Now you can see the legend has the wage from zero all the way to the max and our color palette is a bit different. The other thing I noticed was that the hover data isn't super informative. When I hover over each of these states, I want it to show me the state name and the dollar value, but with an actual dollar sign. So what I'm actually gonna do first is create a new column as part of our min wage data frame. So I'll call the mutate command from dplyr and I'll make our variable name called hover. I'll use 
paste zero so I can concatenate some variables together. And I want to concatenate the state name. So I'm actually going to call state, but I need to make sure I specify it up here first. And then a new line and then the dollar sign and then our wage variable. And I'll run all of this and just show you what our data frame looks like now. So now our hover variable has Alabama and then a new line character that you can't actually see and then the wage. Now we just need to get that column to appear when we hover over these data points. In order to do that, we just go back to our add trace. We pass in another argument called text. And this is going to be, again, a column, which is hover. We can go ahead and run that. Now we get zero Montana, zero dollars, and MT. So we still have too much data being shown. We just need to make sure that the hover info variable is only showing our text that's specified here. And this is kind of a weird way to do it, to have to specify the text and hover info, but I haven't found a better way to do it. So let me know if you do. If we run all of this, now when we hover over our states, we only see the relevant data. And again, as we cycle through the frames, this data will update and change the labels. So functionally, I'm pretty happy with this graph, but I still think that there are some aesthetic changes I want to make. I want to change up the font of the graph and also the style of the labels. And I want to get rid of this toolbar at the top and maybe even add a title. So let's start with the font and the labels. We can change the font by going back down to our layout function and passing in the font. The family I'm going to use is EM Sans, and this is just a font that's installed on my computer. If you want to see all the fonts you can use, all you need to do is call library extra font and of course install it if you don't have it and then you can go ahead and call the fonts command and this will show you any of the fonts that you can use so this will change the fonts of the graph but i also want to change the label style so i'm actually going to make some variables up here the first is going to be called font style and again we're going to specify our family as dm sans just so it matches the rest of our graph we're going to make the size 15 and the color of the label is going to be black we're also going to make a label variable where the background color is going to be this hex value the the border color is going to be transparent. The font is going to be the font style that we just created up there. We can run all of this. And now just to make sure that our Plotly graph is using this information, we need to add another layer called style where our hover label is equal to this label variable that we specified up here. And if we run all of this to refresh our graph, now you can tell it's subtle, but the font has changed. And if I hover over, it's now this white box with no border and our DM Sans font. So let's also get rid of this toolbar up here. This is also pretty easy. We just need to add a config layer and set display mode bar to false. And if we run that, we can see that it doesn't appear when I hover over. Let's add in a title and that'll just be in our layout with the title variable. We'll call this minimum wage in the US. This is from the year 1968 to 2017. So I'll just specify that. And lastly, wage right now, these numbers might not be very obvious, so let's just add a dollar sign before them. And we can do this with the help of another layer called color bar, where we set a tick prefix to the dollar. So let's run all of this just to see where a graph is. And it looks pretty good to me. We've got our legend updated, the labels look good, the title looks good, and our visualization is actually pretty insightful. So let's move on to our next example. This one is going to be a scatter plot on top of a map. So we're plotting longitude and latitude data as opposed to state or country data. And unlike before, we're not going to use any of the interactive capabilities that Plotly has. We're just focused on building a very basic scatter map. So we'll start by reading in our data and just selecting some of the columns so I can give you guys a good view of what this looks like. So we've got about 88,000 rows of data. So a lot of data points with a longitude, a latitude, a date, time, and shape. And I don't think we'll be using these two columns since we're only plotting the longitude and latitude, but just to give some more context. And again, we'll create our UFOs graph. We'll call that plot geo function with our data frame. And now we specify a latitude and longitude with the lat and long variables. So our latitude is our latitude column and our longitude is our longitude column. And again, these are just going to be the column names that are in your data frame over here. Now, if I run this because there are 80,000 points, and Plotly wants to give me an interactive graph, it's actually going to take a long time and make my computer slow. So I'm first going to build my graph just based on a thousand data points. And then when it looks good, I'll build out the whole thing using all the data. So I'll just pass in sample n to grab a random sample of a thousand rows from this data frame. 
and we can output the graph as well. So let's run all of that. And we get a similar map like we had last time where by default it zoomed out to show the whole world. And just like before, we're gonna make a lot more visual changes to this. So the first thing is gonna be making the scope just the US. Before we just specified geo equals list scope USA, but the geo variable actually can take in a lot of different arguments to change the different colors of land masses and borders. So we're gonna create a separate variable called geo properties that's gonna be equal to a list. And again, the scope is gonna be USA. I was also talking about how there are different types of projections, and just to show you what that's like, we can specify a projection type. I'll use Albers USA. I'm going to set show land to true, show subunits to false. So in this case, it won't show state outlines. Land color is going to be gray 10, which is like a dark gray. Show lakes is true, and we're going to make the lakes white. And then just like before, we need to call the layout layer with geo is now going to be geo properties. And let's run all this just to take a look. So we've got just the US now with these blue dots plotted, but there are a couple other changes we need to make. I want to make these blue dots a bit smaller, make them a different color, and obviously get all 88,000 of them instead of just the 1,000. I also need to make sure that before plotting all those 88,000, I need to disable this hover because Plotly will lag a ton. And I might also just remove this toolbar again just to make this look a bit more cleaner. So we'll start by customizing these little dots, and that's not too difficult. We just need to pass in another variable called mark that takes a list. The size of each point I'm going to do is two, which is pretty small and will look good with a lot of data points. I'm going to make the color almost a, a light yellow, and I'm also going to set the opacity to 0.25, just so we get the cool effect where we can see different clusters based on a lot of data points being plotted there. Right now, it's a little tough to see because the data points overlap each other. To get rid of the hover info, we actually add another layer called add markers. Here, we're explicitly specifying them, but by default, they're already plotted. We can specify them just to put in more properties. So we'll say our hover info is none. And to get rid of the toolbar up here, we just need to copy this display mode bar equals false. And I know that there are a lot of different layers, a lot of different variables that I'm just randomly seem to be passing in. And that is kind of the case. You do have to go into the documentation to figure out exactly what you want to do. But once you have a, a decent map that you think looks well, you can typically reuse a lot of those properties and layers each time. So I think it's worth learning some of these different useful layers that Plotly has. So before we run all this, let's just get rid of our sample n so we're plotting all the data and we can run it if i open it up in my browser it looks a bit better you can see because of that opacity that we set we can see those clusters of where these big ufo sightings are and i think this is a pretty cool visualization so obviously these two examples i did aren't a very comprehensive view of all of plotly's features and again i'd recommend taking a look at the documentation to really fine tune your plots the way you want them to look but i'm hoping that i could show you how you could quickly make some pretty good looking plots and if you found this video helpful in any way, I definitely recommend checking out these other videos right here.